I'm here to talk with you briefly today about type 1 diabetes. Um, if you've been unfortunate enough to receive this diagnosis, um, it's most likely the result of a hospital stay for diabetic ketoacidosis, during which time you are given insulin along with um, intravenous fluids, and you've now made a connection with an endocrinologist who's helping you to manage the disease. Also, most likely, that management includes the use of um, an insulin pump and almost certainly at this point a continuous glucose monitor. Um, these represent really the best of modern treatment for type 1 diabetes. Uh, in many ways it's curious because um, the type 1 diabetes is almost a completely different illness from type 2. Um, the type 1 diabetic really doesn't produce insulin uh, or at least not in a significant degree and the type 2 is actually producing too much insulin uh, but their bodies can't use it so it's quite different. In any event uh, now from this point forward uh, your life in many 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 ways is going to be changing dramatically and most particularly and importantly in terms of how you eat and you have discovered that you simply must keep very good track of absolutely everything that you consume. And you know that, that food consumption, if you're using a pump, uh, requires you to know rather precisely the amount of carbohydrate that you're ingesting. Um, it, it, the usual diet that we're accustomed to eating is very, very high in carbohydrate and uh, it's likely that you're going to want to learn to limit that significantly. Of course, all of our bodies are a little bit different, and each one of us responds to a specific carbohydrate in somewhat different ways. Uh, there's a great deal of variation, and you'll be needing to keep a log of those things. Uh, but it's critical that you know fairly accurately just exactly the uh, amount of carbohydrate that you're eating at any given time. We are, however, extremely fortunate to live in a time when the technology for treatment of type 1 diabetes has been absolutely exploding. Um, even in the short uh, time that I've been a type 1 diabetic, uh, which has been now, uh, I believe, about eight years, um, it, it is markedly different than it was at the very start of that. Um, Additionally, while I mention my own particular age, I'll mention the term juvenile diabetes in reference to type 1 is uh, really a misnomer uh, because it can happen much, much later in life as it did to me. Um, the pump manufacturers, all of whom I've encountered, are extremely well-meaning people, very, very responsive uh, to any questions or problems that you might be experiencing. However, they have a little bit of a tendency at this point to imply that by using their technology, you're very, very close to using something which is an artificial pancreas. That is, somehow the pump in combination with the continuous glucose monitor is going to keep track of just exactly how much insulin your body is going to be needing at any particular moment. Such is not the case. Uh, in point of fact, your insulin needs vary terribly and predictably, unfortunately, uh, and change according to how well you feel, if you have an infection of some sort, um, if you're especially tired, if you're especially active, if you're exercising, doing something that requires uh, weight-bearing exercise, anaerobic, or aerobic exercise, um, the results will be different, uh, differently reflected in your glucose readings at any given moment. Um, so you're going to be needing to do quite a lot of experimenting on your own body to make judgments insofar as just exactly how you're going to manage the administration of your insulin on any given day at any given time. There is no formula for any of us, I don't believe, uh, that can be programmed into your insulin pump 
that's going to work for you consistently day in and day out and be effective. It simply is not something which is viable yet at this point. However, uh, the technology is good. Uh, we can administer boluses for food consumption um, based on the number of carbohydrates we're eating with a great deal of accuracy, far more than was possible even a short number of years ago. This technology is really quite fantastic when you get to thinking about it, um, but uh, like all technology, those of you who use it, um, has a the unfortunate tendency to, uh, shall we say, break down from time to time. Sadly, that seems uh, to occur uh, as often as not in the middle of the night. And um, one thing you don't want to really be dealing with is um, major uh, changing of an insertion set or sensor of your CGM at 3 a.m. is not the most pleasant affair in the world. Um, speaking of which, however, um, if you do like technology, I happen to enjoy it as a sort of a little hobby. Uh, there's really quite a lot you can do with it. Those of you who have gotten on board with the whole smart home affair uh, will find that you can actually uh, employ that. I'll give you an example. Uh, computer. Um, open sugar mate. Hmm. I don't know that. My point exactly. Uh, Computer, open sugar mate and tell me my glucose. Okay, here's sugar mate. It's 174 and steady. Last checked four minutes ago. There we go. Thank you. Uh, even if you were to use multiple daily injections, as we did in the old days, you would find that simply the cost of insulin. Uh, for a great many of us is uh, very nearly prohibitive. Um, you'll also be wanting to take uh, care when you eat out, when you go to restaurants. It certainly is possible and reasonable to do that, of course, but in a lot of restaurants you're going to find that there are hidden carbohydrates. Uh, a restaurant who uses, um, for example, flour in uh, their eggs for omelets is not something that you would necessarily consider as a problem, but it's common practice uh, and something to pay attention to. Additionally, in terms of artificial sweeteners, uh, you'll need to experiment. Many of the more popular artificial sweeteners do in fact contain carbohydrate in the fillers that they employ. Um, personally, I solved that particular problem by buying pure sucralose uh, which can be had in both powder and liquid form uh, from places like Amazon. Uh, and that way you have a great deal more control over that. But dining out, sauces, all of those sorts of things um, can be very tricky and you're going to have to pay very close attention to all of that when you do eat out. Uh, obviously, uh, you'll be wanting to take care of um, you know, probably is not the wisest thing to be go eating a, a meal with, you know, two, three, or four hundred grams of carbohydrates involved, which is not at all uncommon in a great many restaurants. It's surprising. Uh, which reminds me that uh, I strongly recommend, especially initially, that you keep uh, a diary of the amount of carbohydrate that you're ingesting daily and um, exactly where that comes from. Finally, uh, the best, besides doing your own experimentation on yourself and talking with your endocrinologist, one of the best things that you can do is um, connect yourself to a community of other people uh, in similar situations. Uh, it's by speaking with others of the type 1 diabetics and learning about their experiences how they deal with them, uh, how to take your pump and your continuous glucose monitor on an airplane, for example, how to travel with insulin, all of these things are critical for you to know. Uh, and um, that, I think, is where you're going to get your most useful information. Um, so, 
I hope that you have enjoyed this little talk. Hope you have a swell day out there. Bye.